Father in heaven, I would ask for your help tonight as I share. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, Darlene and I, when we got back home from, you know, the three days at the hospitals, our house had been a little crooked, so I was rebuilding it, kind of making a crooked thing straight. Our lives had been pretty crooked. The Lord was rebuilding them. There's a verse in Hebrews, Hebrews 11, verse 10, Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. So I know the Lord knows how to build a city. But friends, He knows how to build people too. So the Lord was working in our marriage and in our home. You know, we, had a, we didn't have any really big money problems. Had a good income. We'd had like an art shop. It's a touristy town, Minton, Alabama. Had an art shop right on the corner. Darling was making pottery and uh, painting and I was doing some drawings. We were selling those. By the way, my drawings, they were no good. <laughs> I was just trying to contribute. And uh, life was good. We were both young. I was uh, about 35. We were in the best of health. I'd even rebuilt Darlene's little uh, pottery shed. I think in a couple of videos ago, I showed a picture of Darlene where she was making pottery. Now, cold, it's just miserable out there. It was a ground, uh, the dirt floor. She had a kill and a, and a shed firing the pottery. And here's a picture of the place I rebuilt. You see on the left that it's the where the old place was with the dirt floor. On the right is a picture uh, that I took not too many years ago. You know, of course, when I built it, it was more than 30 years ago. That's why it looks a little weathered. But this is a new place that I was building for Darlene. So she'd have a clean place, a dry place, a warm place. You know, and both of us together, uh, we both ditched some things. Darlene had ditched the new age and the spiritualism and all those things, reincarnation. We, we, we were over that. There was no longer any residual effect from the spiritualism and meta metaphysics and things. And the Lord had helped me get past the drinking and, and given us some victories in our lives. And we had a long way to go. I'm not saying we were perfect. We were still a mess. But the Lord was working with us. And I could see evidence in my home that things were really changing. God had taken a very bad marriage and made it into one of peace and happiness. The house was now a place. Well, I would call it a home. The home was now a place of love. And Darlene and I were very, very thankful for what, the God, for, for what God has done for us. And while we were going through the ordeal at Wildwood, getting a, a little acquainted with some of the people there. And by the way, when we were in Erlanger Hospital, you know, in those, in those last three days when Darlene had the baby and he died, they sent food over to us. The, the nurse that let us in, <coughs> Katie Sigsworth, Katie had brought food over to Erlanger. She knew we were vegetarians and she brought food to us in the hospital. In fact, the people at Erlanger, they brought us the food and they said, this is a delivery from your friends over at Wildwood. And I thought, I don't have any friends over there. <laughs> well, I guess I did. So they brought vegetarian food and uh, really nice, nice folks. But we were made aware they had a health food store. So Darlene and I, as we were getting deeper and deeper into trying to be healthy, you know, healthy living, uh, we visited the health food store. Met Jeanette, I uh, showed a picture of her in my last video. Kind of got to be friends with her and some of the folks there. Started buying our, our health food there. And life was good. House was straight. <laughs> you know, our lives were getting straight. Marriage was, was good. Uh, we had a nice income from, from the art shop. This work we enjoyed, we could do it at home, do it together. And we were uh, even making some friends, some Christian friends up there at Wildwood. But you know, there was still a vacuum. There was something that was missing. There was a vacuum. I, I can't describe it. It's just like I was missing something. I didn't have something. A, a piece of the puzzle was missing. And so we're reading the Bible, and daily, I think, reading the Bible, and I don't understand all the things I'm reading. I mean, Luke 18, 8, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Uh, what exactly does that mean? There's so many things I was reading back then, and I heard sayings in the Christian world, washed in the blood and things. I didn't know what that meant. You need to have a personal experience with God. Didn't even really know what that meant. And uh, so there were a lot of unknowns, and I didn't know what to do. 
But then I got the idea, or maybe Darlene had it, I don't know, but we decided we needed to try church. And I'd never been to church. When I, was a, when I was a child, when I was on the basketball team in high school, in elementary school, I was asked by the church next door if I'd come play on their basketball team. So my church experience just about uh, was limited to playing basketball on the basketball team. And that was, and uh, I remember going up and robbing the Coke machine in the church next door. But that was my church experience. Never really had a had a, uh, a, a worship experience. Just our own, you know, at home reading and studying and talking about God and didn't really know many Christians. Uh, so we thought, where are we going to go? Now, when we went to the health food store at Wildwood, we noticed right on the entrance of Wildwood, there's a church. And it's the Wildwood Church. So we said, why don't we try that first? We'll, we'll visit around to all the different churches. We'll go everywhere. Well, why don't we start with the church at Wildwood? Since we, we, know, we know something about the people there, nice folks, and we'll try it. And I was a little, uh, I was a little afraid about going into a congregation, you know, a group of people, because I'd never had the experience before. I was, I was just, I was fearful. So called up Wildwood. Asked them uh, when the church service was. They gave us the day. They gave us the time. And we went. Now, I don't think I dressed up. I just wore my usual clothes. And I guess Darlene did too, because I don't know how to dress for church. Never been there. And so we went up, uh, pulled into the parking lot, <laughs> kind of shaking, my knees knocking. And we walked into church. And I remember uh, as they walked in and sat down, there was a man there who later would become a close friend. His name was John Jensen. The regular pastor was not there that weekend. Uh, John Jensen was speaking on the subject of fidelity and sincerity, things I'd never heard before in my life. And what I heard, you know, it was so new and so different. It really made an impression on me. And uh, just, yeah. And when we got ready to leave, that nurse, the one that had come to visit us, Katie and her husband Dean and their two children, the ones that I had invited to leave because I was going down and drink beer and, and, and uh, sitting next to us, those people that I asked to leave, they were in the church that day. And they invited us over for lunch. Now I think we had to work. I, I don't know what the, what, exactly what the reason was, but I said, we can't, we need to work. And they invited us to come by their house, swing by their house. They'd give us a piece of uh, pie, blueberry pie or something. And we did. You know, and I don't think we ever would have gone back. Because, you know, the church was just an idea. I don't think the idea was going to stick. Except Dean and Katie said, we want you to come back next weekend and have lunch with us. And Darlene and I said, okay. And uh, we did. And if not for that lunch invitation, I'm not sure we would have gone back. Went back the next weekend. The regular pastor was there. You know, I said I met this lady, Jeanette Atwood. She was a manager of the health food store. Turned out her husband was the pastor of the church, Wilbur Atwood. So I got to meet her, got to hear a sermon from her husband. Went over to Dean and Katie's and uh, they were eating kind of healthy food. You know, I was surprised. And they had, you know, just, I don't remember exactly what they were serving, but it was good. The fellowship was nice, and we had a nice afternoon, and I left. And then we thought, well, might try church next week. And then that started uh, an experience in corporate worship, in the church setting that I'd never had before. And as I got to know the people, I had some real experiences there that were life-changing. Now that place in my heart, the empty hole in my heart, the vacuum, it wasn't being filled by visiting the church. It was a blessing, but I felt like, Darlene, we both felt like something was missing in our lives. And uh, soon the Lord would show us what that was. My dear friends, if you uh, feel like sometimes there's a vacuum in your life that you're missing something, 
call unto me and I will answer thee. The Lord says, Matthew 11, 28 and 29. I'm sorry, Jeremiah 33, verse 3. <laughs> I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. That Matthew 11, 28 and 29 is coming to me, all you that labor and heavy laden. You got a hole in your heart. You got a vacuum. Come to God and I will give you rest. And that's what I was missing. I needed some peace and rest that I didn't have and I didn't know how to find it, didn't know how to get it. So the Lord was going to help us. So my dear friends, I really, I trust, I hope and trust you have a good evening and pray that as the days pass, you're getting deeper and deeper into an experience with Christ. God bless you. Have a nice evening.